Hi guys. Um, October 29th, I had a dream, and I want to um, tell you about it. So, I dreamt um, that I was in my old house in Battleground, and I'm going to break down the dream as I go to tell you it. Battleground um, is a place where the battlefield um, happened. There was a, It was a war ground, and um, it's also a, com a place of comfort, you know, as is knowing how I was growing up out there. Um, and this was before the house burnt down, which was like everything was perfect, right? Um, or quote unquote, everything seemed okay. Well, my whole dream, it was dark outside, okay? And we know that darkness is coming and that the darkness would represent, obviously, you know, a spiritual darkness. Well, um, I happened to see, the, you could see your breath outside and, and um, the fields were just harvested, which right now our fields are being harvested and actually 90% um, of them are already taken down, ready for the winter. All right. And then I saw everyone, which was around my brother, Chip. All right. And we know Chip means to cut into pieces. All right. And, uh, and he was choking on a bag of golden nuggets. And I remember this plain as day. He had a bag and it was silver. And inside of it was golden nuggets. And the package actually said gold nuggets. And um, I, I was, I ran up and I, I kept thinking, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And uh, they're like, oh no, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Well, finally, I started flipping out and I said, what's wrong with him? And my dad took both of his hands and shoved me. And um, he said, um, I said, help him, help him. And he said, we all did what we could. And I started flipping out and I said, he's not dead. And dad said, leave him be. I only got three nuggets out. And, um, we know three is confirmation and three also stands for the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three also is the same amount of days that it took for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, um, it's talking also about Lazarus rising from the dead. And you will see how this goes in with my dream. And then I saw him lay on the cold ground, right? And as I, I ended up walking out the field back into the house and went out the front door and it was daytime and I saw all these illegal immigrants that was out there, tons and tons of children. All of them were Spanish, every bit of them. And uh, by the way, this dream felt really, really real to me. Okay. So, um, as I was, I stepped out and uh, I saw, I was mad because I saw this, this person drag a child by its hair. It was a girl and was yanking him. And uh, I said, what are you guys doing? Because I was so angry. And they said, oh, we're sex trafficking as if it was no big deal. Like it's the normal. And uh, I was so mad. I took a gun and I shot all of them in the head, but there was no blood. Um, it was just like, pew, like a silence or I put the gun to their head, boom, they're gone. They're gone. They're dead. They were dead. But all the children remained and were alive. And um, I tried loading them up, and my brother in law was um, sitting there in his truck waiting. And it was down a long dirt road. And um, I tried to load up these children into um, the back of the truck. But they were scared. They didn't want to go. So I hopped in the vehicle. And then I kept telling them, it's okay, it's okay. Well, then I was going to get out to try and help them. And when I did, I got out of the vehicle. and went right back to the same scene where my brother was laying there dead. Or quote-unquote dead. And um, I said, he's not dead. And my dad insisted that he was. And I said, no, he's just in a coma. And I started laying hands on him and I said we got to have faith and I spoke in the name of Jesus rise up and walk and nothing happened so okay my hands were like like almost doing a CPR thing I don't know for some reason I had him here instead of here but and I said in the name of Jesus rise up and walk nothing happened so then I took his cheeks like this and I said I have faith you will live I said rise up and walk and then just then, he jumped up, all happy as could be, went to give me a friendly kiss. And he said, it's been five years, and just started acting like nothing was wrong. And I said, no, it hasn't. I said, it's, it's, you're here and you're alive. I said, this just happened, you know. They thought you were dead, but you're alive. And uh, 
then I woke up. So, um, okay, there's a lot to this dream. First and foremost, we know that these, um, all right, chip, it, like I said, means to cut in pieces. Curtis means polite. Five is grace. And five, um, he, in, in the sense, was five years. Now, breaking this down, the force that which was holding me back from doing my my the power of the Holy Spirit, I was not allowed to do. Why? All right. So I, I was on the phone with Darla, and um, and I've been praying over this as well. And she has even um, you know, helped me interpret. And uh, what we got was about Lazarus. How um, you know, Jesus didn't have to go see him right away. He waited. It was what three days, and um, he finally went to him and showed them a miracle rise up and walk Lazarus come out rise up and walk and he did um and he did that to show a point that he, there's that it was a miracle that he is who he says he is right and it's also in reference to his resurrection that was about to happen okay and so therefore in order for God's power to be seen he had to have let his body die out, okay? Or so others have thought. And I said, no, because, you know, when you are in Christ, you don't die. You're just in a deep sleep. And that's what that coma stand for. Um, and silver and gold, um, you know, it's funny because that song, silver and gold, have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lazarus, rise up and walk. That song, it's, it's, I didn't have nothing to offer. I couldn't help get it out, but I offered the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be able to help heal. And I do believe that we will receive those gifts once we are transformed. Okay. Um, and now the, the fact that Curtis was in the red truck, we know red stands for um, the bloodshed. Um, it's, it's represent and, and, and his name means courteous and, and polite. And we know Jesus is courteous and polite. He's also merciful and graceful, especially to his children. Well, these immigrants that's coming over, I wanted to help. Okay. And the innocent children are those who are lost in the world and don't know Christ. Not saying everyone is innocent because they are not. Everyone is given a choice, but... Those who, um, who are innocent, like the actual children who have no control over what is happening, you know, it is our duty to help do what we can as, as Christians and bond as one. Um, we are to help raise them up, raise up the body. Um, and so them being afraid, they're so used to being set in their worldly ways that they didn't care to try and you know find the new way of life and then I got back and um you know then I was able to heal my my brother and he rose up and he walked and uh and he got up and when he tried to kiss me you know because in in the bible when you greet someone with a kiss it's, it's joyful. It's, um, a hello. It's, it's love, love, uh, an emotion of love, but it also, you know, means betrayal as they kiss twice. But in this case, it was a happy kiss and he was grateful as if nothing happened. And that's, that's exactly what's going to happen when we give up our old life for Christ, we become new. And it's like nothing ever happened. It's like, how do I explain it? Like all of our sins have been washed away. Like nothing's ever, like we never did no wrong. We're just so happy to be in that moment with, with Christ, um, to have that. All right. And then five, this is something that I found interesting. Five is mercy. Okay. Now, as many do not want to hear this, just hear me out. I do not know the day or hour. I know it's soon. Really, really 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 soon um but if you add five months from now that's november december january february 
March. And that is around the timing of the barley harvest. And we are the barley. Okay. And um, I'm not saying that we're going to be here. But I found that interesting about how I had that. And uh, I know that that five would represent some sort of time period. I don't know if it's days, months, weeks, um, years. I don't know. But I know it has some type of significance. And now... Um, I'm going to read to you some scripture out of Matthew 23. And it says, um, Then Jesus spoke to the multitude and his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and, and do, but do not do according to their works. Okay. Right there, the illegal immigrants, they are trying to do things in their own way. Of course, I believe that this is not only staged, but this is to bring in war into our United States. That's why the wall is going to be built. Everyone's going to be stuck here so that they are able to brand and mark out those um, for the new world order. And uh, the new world order cannot happen if there's no chaos because out of chaos brings order. And yes, I've been shown this many, many times. So then they say, for then, for, for they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers, which means they push this other stuff for everyone else to do. Okay, and this is exactly like what the government is doing. They're pushing for all these agendas to happen and expecting us to help, which a lot of them are. And what they're doing, they're help they're not helping the good cause. They're causing chaos. Okay, like all these staged wars and and um fires and things like that. But all their works they do to be seen by men. They make their phil phylac what is that word? phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garments they love the best places at feasts and the best seats in the synagogues greetings in the marketplaces and to be called by men rabbi rabbi but you do not be called rabbi for one is your teacher the christ and you are all brethren do not call anyone on earth your father for one is your father, he who is in heaven, and do not be called teachers, for one is your teacher, the Christ. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Okay? But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Okay. And, um, that refers to, like I said, like the government, um, they want to take things in their own hands and they want to push it, but they don't want you to pursue the truth. They want you to pursue their own, um, by their own hands. Okay. But they, they're the ones that will not accept it. They're just pushing it so they can have total control over the people. Okay. And then, um, what are you Pharisees and scribes? For you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore, you will receive greater condemnation. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you travel land and sea to win one proselyte, and when he is one, you make him twice as much of son of hell as yourselves. Wow. <laughs> Let me, one last scripture. Woe to you. Blind guides who say, whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing. But whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obliged to perform it. Oh my gosh. See, this is some dangerous, dangerous stuff that um, the government is doing. They are burying themselves and pulling many down with it. And that's exactly what they said is going to happen. Those who follow into this new world order, into these um, pushing away, pushing out the Holy Spirit, pushing out... God's people for doing what is right, they will be damned to hell, period. They are the ones that, no matter what, um, are, will not be spared, okay? Now, I have good news. It says to them, okay, Lamentations 3, 
30 through 33. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes him and be full of reproach. Okay? For the Lord will not cast off forever, though the cause grief, yet he will show compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he does not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. Meaning that God does not purposely want us to die. He does not purposely want sin to be allowed but because sin has occurred, he has no choice but to fulfill his promise from what he said at the beginning of time. Otherwise, God would be considered a liar and God is not a liar. And it says, Ezekiel 33, 11 and 12, say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live, turn Turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? This isn't just talking about the house of Israel. This is just referring to in general. Why would you not want to live? Why do you want to consider to, to live in an evil world, con continue with the evil, and, and uh, die? Because that's the only thing. And and it, even from God's mouth, he says that he finds no pleasure even in the death of the wicked because he loves everyone and treats everyone equally. It is only because of our sin that man has caused and by your choices is what causes your, you know, what chooses your destination. God gave us free will, free mind, and it's up to us to choose which path to take and the path that I chose in my dream was was for the good to honor God and because of it there was a blessing and with faith okay faith is believing in something that is unseen right the absence in believing things that are unseen okay and I know the works of God because he works them in me and as long as I I have him I will live forever Okay, but when you take matters in your own hands and go to the wicked side and bring those down with you, then you are condemned. You are the one causing condemnation upon yourself. And even Jesus himself said there is no condemnation in, in the death, burial, resurrection. There's no condemnation in Christ, period. So, um, um, I'm going to read you verse 13. Nope. 12 and 13, it says, Therefore you, O son of man, say to the children of your people, The righteousness of the righteous man shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wicked, he shall not fall because of it in the day that turns from wickedness. Nor shall the righteous be able to live because of his righteousness in the day that he sins. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, but he trusts in his own righteousness and commits iniquity, none of his righteous works shall be remembered. But because of the iniquity that he has committed, he shall die. Which means you did not live up to what God has said. If you obey by God's commands, you will live. If you go and twist God's word and take it in your own hands and say, no, I'm going to live the way that I want to live, then guess what's going to happen? You will surely die. And that's exactly what's going to happen to all these people because people are going to be willingly taking the, the mark of the beast. They're going to be willing willingly accepting the new world order and they're willing to accept these illegal immigrants and allow war upon our soil. This is not God's doing. This is man's doing because of our own free will. So stop blaming God for every little thing that happens in your life. It's not him who does it. Okay. Like he's like God says, he does not find pleasure in destroying even the wicked because he loves us all. Um, choose which path and who, who you serve. Choose which God you serve today. Do you, choose the one true God or do you want to conform to the things of this world I know who I choose and that's the one true God I choose to live so please pray over this as always and know that Jesus is still coming war is also coming and um we are this close like that that close to going home any moment any day and everything is staged the government is not who they say they are so, as always, pray over this, and God bless.